Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank Professor Runkle for the invitation. My lecture is about promise of uh, high cutoff membranes and median cutoff membranes for CRT. These are my conflicts of interest. Well, first we need to start with the definitions. Each membrane has a retention onset and a cutoff. It does not depend on the molecules. And each molecule has a sieving coefficient depending on the membrane. MWRO stands for molecular weight retention onset. MWCO stands for molecular weight cutoff. Well, it's not only about poor radius, but also about poor density. So the membranes usually they don't have uniformity in their poor size and density. This figure represents uh, a membrane and here is the saving curve of a uh, given membrane. In the X axis, we represent the size of the molecules and in the Y axis, we represent the percentage of extraction of those molecules. For this given membrane, for example, urea and vitamin B12, they are 100% filtered. It means that the saving coefficient for these two molecules with this membrane is 100% or 1.0. When the curve starts to bend right here, and this point is considered, considered the retention onset point. Why so? It means that molecules bigger than this threshold are extracted less than 90%. This other point here is the cutoff. It means that further on this point or molecules bigger than this molecule here, they are filtered less than 10%. We will focus here on middle molecules, which are molecules bigger than 500 daltons up to 50,000 daltons. And all the inflammatory mediators, they are in this range, they are middle molecules. For example, TNF, IL-10, IL-6, they are all in this range of molecular weight. But it's not, it's not only the size, the, the weight of the molecules, but also the size of this molecule, the virtual molecular radius. For example, hepcidin has 27 kilodaltons and PTH has nine kilodaltons. However, due to the folding of the protein of hepcidin, you can see that they are almost, they have almost the same virtual molecular radius. So this is uh, also an important characteristic that will define the saving coefficient of this, uh, both of these molecules. So here, this graph in the x axis, we have the molecular weight, and then the y axis, we have the saving coefficient. Each of these curves represents a different membrane. For beta 2 microglobulin, the saving coefficient using a low flux membrane is less than 10%. Using a high flux membrane, the saving coefficient is 50%. Using a high cutoff membrane is 80%, and using a median cutoff membrane is 90%. So here it's that concept that the saving coefficient depends for a given molecule, depends on the membrane that we are utilizing. Using a high flux membrane, the retention onset, so that point where the curve starts to bend, is 2000 Daltons. So it will be here. And the cutoff is 15,000 Daltons, which would be down here. Now, using a high cutoff membrane, the retention onset is here, 50,000 kilo Daltons, 50,000 Daltons, and the cutoff is way here, 170 kilo Daltons. And this is way bigger than albumin molecular weight, which means that albumin uh, is lost in this treatment. 
And now for a median cutoff membrane, the retention onset is here, 50, 20 kilojoutons, and the retention onset is 60 kilojoutons. Albumin has 68 kilojoutons. So the cutoff is uh, for molecules smaller than albumin, which uh, is all desirable. Uh, in this picture here, in the X axis, we represent the pore size. And in the Y axis, we represent the pore density. We can see that for a high flux membrane and regarding albumin leakage, the pore sizes are smaller than the size of albumin. And they are more concentrated here in the size of molecules between beta 2 and myoglob myoglobin. So we have virtually no uh, albumin leakage. For a median cutoff membrane, the density of the pores, again, is between beta 2 and myoglobin. However, the range of distribution of the pore, pores is narrower. So we have more uniformity in this pores. And see that we have some pores in the membrane that allows albumin leakage. It means that we have, we lose two grams per session in a four hour session of dialysis. And for a high cutoff membrane, we can see that there is a wide range of pore sizes, which is not desirable. And many of those pores in this region here, they are bigger than albumin and they allow the extraction of albumin. And in a four hour session, there is a loss of eight grams of uh, albumin. And when we put those curves together, we see the main difference between a median cutoff membrane and a high cutoff membrane, which is uniformity. And then here, the range of pore sizes in a median cutoff membrane is narrower, whereas it's, more wi it's wider with a high cutoff membrane and it allows the extraction, the undesirable extraction of albumin. The concept of backfiltration was described in the 80s and it means that in some point during the future length in the hollow fiber, the pressure becomes negative, the transmembrane pressure becomes negative and we have an inflow of fluids from the dialysate space towards the blood compartment. And this was termed internal hemodiafiltration because we know when we perform HDF, we can set the machine with replacement pre-filter or post-filter. But this phenomenon occurs inside the filter, the back filtration or internal filtration. This has been proved with a model developed in the 90s in which a tracer that was not filtered in the future and radioisotope. When it was inside the future, the concentration of this molecule increased and then this was diluted during the passage of blood in the future. This has been also demonstrated with hematocrit. So when the blood starts running into the future, there is a concentration of the blood and then a dilution of the blood. So this is not theoretical. This is what really happened and has been proved. So the rationale for HCO and MCO and CRT is that back filtration saves lives in the sense that it has been applied for almost 10 years with the high cutoff membranes. So here are some studies that applied this high cutoff membrane in septic patients. And one of the advantages of applying this modality is that you can perform CVVHD or uh, continuous hemodialysis and you have the same benefits if you were applying CVVH, hemofiltration, in the sense that you don't need the convection to remove inflammatory mediators because only applying HD due to the back filtration and the internal filtration phenomenon, you already extract mere molecules. 
This study was in chronic patients, but here in the x-axis we have the treatment time, and in the y-axis the percentage of concentration of a given solute, in this case myoglobin. So when you start a dialysis session, you have a decrease in the plasma concentration, and if you apply a high flux membrane, this is the concentration, the drop in the concentration of myoglobin. If you apply hemodiafiltration, this is the curve, and the lower concentration are achieved if you apply median cutoff hemodialysis for myoglobin, for instance. The bigger the molecule, the better, the more advantageous is MCOHD. In this study, the same study with a blood flow of 400 ml per minute, this is the clearance of given solids. So for complement factor D, which has 24 kilodaltons, when you apply a MCO membrane, the clearance is 32 ml per minute, whereas if you apply hemodiafiltration, it's only 12. So the bigger the molecules, the more advantage those uh, more advantage you have uh, with the MCO membrane. In another study, uh, uh, evaluating the removal ratio, which is the difference between the concentration pre-dialysis and after dialysis of a given solute, we see that the removal ratio with MCO is 60% for myoglobin, uh, applying MCO, and in HDF is 35%. For prolactin, which has 23 kilodaltons, 63 against 47%. So we mentioned this possibility of treatment of applying MCO membrane in CRT during the COVID pandemic, because we know that we can extract and remove more inflammatory mediators. And our rationale is to modulate inflammation and avoid the cytokine peaks, the inflammatory, but also the anti-inflammatory cytokines, and therefore prevent uh, a hyper-inflammatory states or, and also immunoparalysis. Thanks for your attention.